question, which is pretty close to the first ones. Um, so as a non-native speaker, what were some obstacles you faced during your first year in China? And actually not just first year, but all of mm. the rest years. I would say um, I can't recall any teaching wise, like when I got my job, right, so everyone knows that I'm not a native speaker, right? So, I mean, I, I didn't like trying to say, hey, listen, like I'm, I, I know this, I, I've been there, like I have this diploma, I have all of that. So I was pretty honest about my, uh, about my experience, about my resume. So I didn't have to, uh, to prove that I was, you know, native or non-native. So that wasn't the thing. Um, I think the only obstacle, not even an obstacle, but uh, it gets a little uh, dicey when it uh, comes to communication with parents, right? Uh, unfortunately, a lot of parents are not as educated as we, we, we as, as we wish they were, right? And they have this presumption: oh my God, like my um, English teacher needs to, needs to be from America or needs to be from Canada, right? Which is far from truth because, like, as non-native speakers, so pretty much we went, we learned English from the age of seven, maybe or eight or six, going from A B C. So we know how English works. We know the challenges that child might um, occur, might, might, might experience while learning the language. So in many, many cases, there there's studies done by uh, respected scientists, respected philologists, um, saying that non-native speaker actually is better in introducing language to a child, right, on the first day, because uh, that's what it is, right? That's what it is. So, yeah. and again, uh, but other than that, like other than that, other than talking to the parents, it doesn't really exist. I mean, like, do I need to prove myself that I'm not, I'm a good teacher, but I'm not a native? Like, it's not really, I'm not sure where the rumor's coming from. And as far as I remember, some schools, they try to make you lie about your origin. Is that right? Oh, that's right. That's right. Please don't do that. Yeah, please don't do that. So again, um, let's say the school tells you, oh, wow, okay, like, you get a job, right? You get a job. You, you start on Monday. But when you get, um, let's say, when you get approached by the parents, please make sure it's uh, tell them that your name is John and you're from Kentucky, U.S., right? Something like that. I say, whoa, what's going on, right? So don't do that. Right? Be honest, right? Now, uh, my advice too, like, be honest in China. Be honest. They don't like lies. They they can see right through you. They appear to be silly. Oh, really? Like, it's... It, it, Oh, something is wrong with the connection. Oh, sorry, you've just oh, come for a second. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, could you just repeat uh, what you've said? Like, um, if you lie, so what happens? Yeah. So please, yeah. Like, um, I avoid lying, right? Because I mean, lying uh, is something that they have no appreciation for. They have no tolerance for that. And sooner or later, like it will come up, right? I mean, because it's obvious, and there is a lot of educated Chinese. They see right through you, right? You tell them, "Hey, you from U.S.? Like, where what's in U.S.? Like, you know, what street you lived on, right? It's it just doesn't make any sense. It does not make any yeah. sense. Be, be proud, like of, of where you come from. Be proud of your nationality, and prove them that you're a hard worker. Show them the results of your work. That's it. That's what you have to do. All right. So the most important thing is to uh, prove that you are educated, not that you are a native speaker. Um, yes. That's what's most important. And um... thanks so much for watching. We are ITTT, the leading provider for TEFL and TESOL training courses. If you like this video, please subscribe by clicking the button down here and click on any of the videos here on the left for more interesting teaching tips for getting certified to teach English abroad and online.